Hey friends, I wanted to tell you today about three things you could start growing so easily with leftover scraps from your kitchen. So since I started this channel, I've gotten some really beautiful messages and comments from people about how they're really excited to see my garden grow because they're just starting or they want to start, they're intimidated. And I was thinking, what could I share that would be really helpful for someone who's not ready yet to do like a big garden, but they would love to just grow something and have like the feeling of accomplishment get to enjoy something they grew themselves, get to watch the process and build their confidence. And one of the things that I did first was growing things inside my house from kitchen scraps. And so I wanted to share with you the three that I started with that I think are so easy and really fun. Now this is by no means a professional level tutorial on how to grow these things to get the highest yield, to be the most effective. This is like 101 beginner, just do it <laughs> guide. So if you want to dig more into how to grow each of these three things, like the best possible with like the best soil conditions and amendments and all that stuff, this is not the video for you. There are a ton of videos here on YouTube where you can specifically search for how to grow each of these things and find out like exactly the soil pH and exactly the fertilizers. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pretend like this is just for fun. <laughs> With gardening, I kind of bring a philosophy that I used to bring in when I was a professional photographer and that was, this idea of the best camera is the one that's on you, <laughs> the one that you have in your hands to take a picture of. Like, as professional photographers, you know, you can get into these debates of like, all the camera specs and the functions and capabilities and which one's the absolute best. But oftentimes, some of the most meaningful photos I get in my life are with my iPhone because I just happen to always have it on me. So I catch the moments that are really special. And I bring that philosophy into my gardening as well because it's like, what is the best way to grow something? It's just getting it in the dirt. <laughs> is the dirt perfect? Maybe not, but is it there? Yes, and so at least you're getting going. So this is for beginners this is for someone who's like i don't know what i'm doing but i just want to try so the three things that i want to talk to you today that you can grow from kitchen scraps i'm going to start with the easiest one and that is green onions okay so how many of you buy like those bushels of green onions from the grocery store for like a dollar and then you chop them all up and you just throw away the roots well the cool thing about growing green on onions from kitchen scraps is you don't even really ever need dirt you can just continue this process in cups of water on your counter or your windowsill it's so simple so these have been going for not even a week this is how much growth from not even a week you can see where they were cut right here where this white is so we use these to make um, an Asian noodle recipe. And so what you'll do is you'll cut the greens that you're gonna use for your recipe. I cut them down to here. And then you take just this bottom part here. I'll even do it right here now. Okay, so this is what you eat, right? And then you take this bottom part and you just get a little container of water and you stick it right in the water. And the roots that are there will just suck up the water and it will grow a new stalk out the top. And you can literally just keep harvesting over and over and over again. They'll keep doing it and it's really fast. So you don't have to grow green onions as often as you think you do. So that's one of the first ones and so simple. The second one I wanna show you guys is sweet potatoes. So you can grow sweet potatoes from potatoes that have sprouted or chitted, C-H-I-T, chit, chitted um, in your pantry or on your counter. Now, this is a little bit tougher because um, some people say that potato, grocery store potatoes are sprayed with something to keep them from sprouting. While that may be true, I don't know if it's just because I live in a wa more warm and humid condition, but almost always any potatoes that we forget about and we find in the pantry or are left on a counter in our house sprout. So this is what it looks like when a sweet potato starts to sprout. Here. They get these little teeny plant spikes. Now doing sweet potatoes is a little different from regular potatoes. So here's the difference that you're gonna have. 
is with regular potatoes, which I'm gonna tell you about in a second, you just cut the potatoes with the sprouts on them and stick them in the ground and they continue to grow, so easy. With sweet potatoes, there's an extra step. So with sweet potatoes, what you do is when you have one of these little guys that's big enough, like this one has a little leaf tip on it, you just pinch it at the base and you gently twist it off. Then what you're gonna do with this guy is you need to help it grow some roots. So you're just gonna stick it in a little thing of water. I just use like little measuring cups. And then in a few days, I already had one in there, it'll grow roots. It'll start to grow roots and bright green leaves off the top, you see? And once it does, you can plant it in some soil. So I have a little cup here just to show you, but I actually will sometimes plant these right in the container I'm gonna grow my potatoes in, instead of like, this is a seedling cup. But for this video, I just wanna show you. So you'll just stick it right in the dirt. <laughs> and eventually this will be your sweet potatoes. I like to grow potatoes in bags. You can also grow them in buckets, really simple. I mean, you can grow them in the ground as well. There's one thing about potatoes soil that I wanna say to you guys is it needs to not be compacted because potatoes are tubers, they grow from the roots. So the roots need to be able to get through the soil. So depending on your conditions, just sticking them right in the ground might be a challenge if, you're, if your dirt is really compacted or old or um, if you don't know what chemicals or pesticides might be in it. So I like to grow mine in potatoes or my potatoes in containers. You can use old buckets you can use grow bags, which you can find on Amazon. They're really inexpensive. That's my favorite way to do it. And they even have some that have little Velcro openings so that you can harvest the potatoes without having to dump the whole bag out. But the easy traditional method of growing potatoes in containers is that when they're ready to harvest, you just get a wheelbarrow or a tarp and you put it down and you dump the whole thing of dirt in there and you fish through for the potatoes. It's actually really fun. <laughs> it's fun for grown-ups, but it's, it's also really fun if you have kids and you wanna include them because it's a little bit like searching for tr buried treasure in the dirt. Um, and that's it, it's that simple. So sweet potatoes will grow like a climbing vine low on the ground. So whatever you, container you grow them in, the green leaves will start to grow and they'll just kind of run on the ground. Now the potatoes will all be in whatever container you use. So you don't wanna use something like this. This isn't big enough to grow actual sweet potatoes in. So that's why I was saying a bucket or a grow bag are really great options for you. And then like if you live in an apartment, you could do this on a patio, you could do this on your front porch stoop. You don't need a big yard to do this. It takes a little while, but they're really beautiful plants. So it's really, you know, it's not a hard wait at all. And it's just cool to get to see and watch. Okay, so that's sweet potatoes. What about regular potatoes? Regular potatoes are even easier. So I'm gonna show you these two bags of potatoes <laughs> on my counter that started to sprout. Can you see? So what you do for potatoes is, okay, here's the thing you guys, just like everything, there's a million opinions on how to do this the best way. Some people will tell you to cut every single, like to cut the potato into pieces where every single sprout has its own section of potato and plant each and every one. I mean, like this one has so many. What I have always done is I literally just stick them right in the ground. <laughs> I stick them right in the ground just like this with the side with the most little sprouts sticking up so they continue to grow out towards the sun and then I just loosely cover them with dirt. So I put the potato kind of like just under the surface. And I'm going to take you out to my garden and show you the method of potatoes um, so that you can get the most space for the actual potatoes to grow under the dirt surface. It's super simple. It's just one little thing to remember. So let me show you. All right, so this is what a grow bag looks like. They come in all different sizes. And the easy thing about growing potatoes in these is you just add your soil. Now for this guide, I'm just gonna tell you to use organic compost or a good potting soil mix you can get into the specifics of growing potatoes and all the things that they need if you like but this is all about just getting started so what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill your bag halfway up these are a little overfilled this one's actually a little better so you want the bag filled halfway and then you're gonna fold down the the big part of the sides because what you do is you plant the potato in the ground 
gonna loosely cover with dirt. And all of the places where there were the little sprouts are gonna grow out and be plants. And as the plant starts to grow, you're gonna continue to add dirt up the stems so that eventually the dirt level will be up here and it's all that space underneath for the roots because they're just gonna continue to grow and put out leaves and stuff. So as you do it, as you fill with more dirt, you lift this up. So eventually the dirt level will come all the way to the top and your plant will be up here. And that way the original potatoes were like halfway down in the bag so the roots can continue to space out through the whole bottom and you have more space for the potatoes. And then you'll know that they're done when the plants on top die and turn brown. That's when you'll know it's time to harvest. Take the whole bag, dump it out, dig through, find the potatoes, and you're done.